So recently I got an email from somebody random that said, hey, can you review these lights on my channel? And I just nonchalantly said, yeah, send them over and I'll review them one day. Well, I got them and I realized that the box says gooey light, which was uh, hard not to keep a straight face when reading that box. But then when I opened them up, it said M Tiger Sport on the top of here. And when you look at the bottom, it says G4S auxiliary light. Really what that goes to show me is that they don't really know what their name is yet either. And I didn't want to just completely mock them. I wanted to actually give it a college try and see if these are any good because there's a couple of different things that I'm not used to seeing on off-road pod lights, like a dimmable switch here. You can dim these down a little bit. There's also a couple other features and I'll be honest with you guys, you have to like push it, hold it down. You have to blink twice and like, you know, squint your eyes and eventually it'll work. And so after about 10, 15 minutes of fiddling with it, I figured out all the features. I'm gonna show you guys that on the wall right now. I'm gonna show you what the light output looks like. And then I wanna compare it to an actual off-road pod light that we sell that we've tested extensively. When you turn the light output all the way to the yellow color, I measured 270 maximum lux. When you turn it all the way back to the white color, I measured 410 maximum lux. I often see in almost every single pod light, a light that's converted over from a white to a yellow loses about 30% brightness. So, so far that's pretty on point. If you turn the dial to the center and you do both half yellow and half white, I measured 580 maximum lux. I'm gonna say that's the brightest peak intensity for this when it comes to the fog beam pattern. Now, I did notice that they're also saying this has a spot beam pattern. So if you mess around with the settings and the buttons for another 10 minutes, you'll figure it out and you'll get this beam pattern. And to me, that's pretty cool that it's coming from one pod light and not cool at the same time. I'll explain it later. At the brightest point on the wall, I measured 1,640 maximum lux. So it went way up compared to the 580 maximum lux of the white and yellow combined fog light beam pattern. On the back of the box, it says fog light. So I'm gonna consider this a fog light beam pattern. That was the light output you saw that was yellow, or if you turn the dial, it was white, AKA blue, because it definitely had a blue hue to it. The thing is, it's hard for us to always replicate the color on the camera, but that white really had a lot of blue hue to it. It also says on the back that it has that supplemental spotlight. So when you saw us toggling between the light outputs, you notice that punch of light a little bit. Well, that was the spot beam pattern. So they should have probably called this a combo beam pattern, but they didn't. So I wanna compare this to the four banger fog light beam pattern, the SAE fog, and see how that compares. Now we are owned by the same organization that owns Morimoto, but I want you to know that I'm doing this as unbiased as possible and will be a great standard when it comes to off-road pod lights. If you're unfamiliar with Morimoto 4 Banger, it is the brightest at a certain point off-road LED pod light in the world. My goal is to just show you what the GUI light looks like compared to a product that we've already tested extensively. This is what the four banger looks like in the same distance away from the wall. The width obviously is much better. This goes way further. This is gonna help you see much better into the ditches using this as a SAE fog light beam pattern. If you compare this to the GUI light at its brightest point, which was when it was half yellow and half white of 580, I measured 1,280 maximum lux, which means that the four banger is essentially about twice as bright as the GUI lights. So if I wanted a fog light beam pattern, I definitely would recommend getting a fog light specific light, not a light that does fog light and spotlight. If you really truly wanted a spotlight, get a pod light that's specifically designed for a spotlight output, like the four banger spot. Look at this. This is a spotlight beam pattern and I measured 10,150 maximum lux. You probably won't believe these numbers, but it's true. We used two Morimoto pod lights here. We had two of the GUI lights set up at the same time as well. So this is the output of two pod lights just crossing over each other, aligned like they should be. With the wide beam pattern plus the spot beam pattern of the GUI lights, they were 1,640 lux with just the spot beam pattern of the Morimoto at 10,150 lux, you can see where I'm going with this. Figure out what kind of beam pattern you want, 
figure out what kind of color you want and you will get the best version of that. If you want a fog light beam pattern, get a Morimoto fog light beam pattern or a Baja Designs fog light beam pattern or a Dial Dynamics fog light beam pattern, something tried and true. Don't get something that does fog light and spot. Looking at the G4S pod light, it doesn't seem to be SAE compliant, but the website does say ECE, which is the E mark for all of you overseas. That might be good, but I think it's kind of doubtful. I would like to see the paperwork to make sure that this is actually accurate information. The Morimoto 4 banger does not have an E mark from what I can tell, but it is SAE compliant for street use. Now for the major issue with the M Tiger Sport lights, the price. Holy crap, I see like $658 on one website. That is too much money for one pod light. I like the features, yes, but I wouldn't recommend this because I would rather you get a pod light specific to the application that you need. Say if you've got a pod light that does a fog light light output, actually use that for your fog lights. Don't get something that doesn't really know what it is. If you wanna put off-road pod lights on the ditch lights, I recommend getting like an actual spot beam pattern or a combo driving beam pattern. I don't want something that does both. And then just pick the side that you wanna be on. Do you wanna be on team amber and yellow or team white? In my opinion, I like the color of the white beam pattern better. However, a lot of people out there say that yellow, you can see through the dust and snow particles better. There's science to prove that, but some people in the real world will disagree. All I know is go to headlightrevolution.com and find a product that's actually been tested, that's specific to your vehicle. Type in your year, make and model, and we'll see you guys there.